So today we will be writing a small Python code to label the words in the sentences. It is an important concept in NLP and is called name identity recognition. Let's say the sentence is Michael is working in Google. Then the NER tag for Michael will be person and likewise for Google the tag will be organization. Now without the knowledge of machine learning, how would you try to solve this problem? Even though it may seem that deep learning has hijacked each and every field, these concepts have actually been very useful when we're trying to create something totally different. So before we go forward, let me ask you a question. How are humans able to recognize and label something as name or location? Ram is singing. Simon loves maple syrup. Now here, we are able to make out that noun comes before verb. And the verb phrase here is, is singing. Now Shaup cannot sing, uh, Ubuntu cannot sing, it has to be a person. So how do I explain this information to a machine? It becomes really important. This is what led to modified engram model. It simply tags based on co-occurrences in labeled dataset. So out of millions of lines, if we have 100 occurrences of XYZ is singing, then that XYZ is definitely a person. Can you think of why can't we simply create a list of places, names, etc. and just do hash lookup to retrieve those tags? Uh, that would be quite simple, right? Uh, well, actually, if you think about it quite clearly, you'll realize that the same name or same word can have multiple tags. For example, apple a day keeps a doctor away has apple tagged as an item. But if you say apple is a company, then apple becomes an organization. So these tags keep changing and this creates a lot of confusion. Not just that, a word can be a noun and at the same time it can also be a verb. For example, if we say the sentence, we went to camp at the old mining camp. Here the word camp is used as a verb in the first part and it's also used as a noun phrase in the last part. So the word also changes its POS tag based on where it is used. Now, Lafartley published a paper in 2001 related to conditional random fields and how it can be applied for tasks like segmentation for images and also for any art tagging using linear chain CRFs. CRF is a discriminative model because it involves modeling of the conditional distribution and FII, that's how it got its big name. On the other hand, modeling joint distribution will involve terms like P of xj given xi, etc. These terms involving only input feature play no role in CRF as we are only interested in conditionals or terms like P of y given x. CRF tries to maximize the energy of the random field. We'll first understand CRF for image segmentation problem because it's much simpler that way. If you can think of an image as large mesh made by matchsticks and that each glue or pixel label is the hidden random variable, then it's something like a foreground or background. This glue is also connected to another set of random variables called input features. It can be any information derived from RGB pixel values. Now we already know that the joint distribution can be written in terms of product of conditionally independent terms, like in HMM. Similarly, the overall energy of Markov random field can be expressed in terms of product of click potentials. Now what's a click? Click is mutually adjacent set of random numbers. For a triangle, we will have a click of 3. For a square, we will have a click of 2. For a pentagon with a star, the click will have 5 terms. So now, energy of a mesh can be expressed as a product of these click potentials. Or in log sense, it's just the sum of weighted kernel functions. This way, We'll be able to express the energy of random fields corresponding to an image or a sentence. Now let's say I have segmented or photoshopped an image in one way and my brother has photoshopped in another way. The energy for the labeled image will tell who has done it better. Uh, more the energy, the better the labeling. The CRF made it even simpler by approximating the individual potential terms as weighted features. Now like the cute cute pops trying to figure out who's the daddy, we need to find out which model do I fit the best. This gives me some sense of unity potential. And the pairwise terms tells me the consistency of the label with respect to its neighbors. 
You can understand the pairwise term very easily because if you find a rope and tie it all around the object, uh, let's say there are multiple objects and multiple such rope pieces, and if you take the total length of the rope used, if you try to minimize it, that's exactly what the pairwise terms minimization does. It tries to reduce the length of this rope. Let's jump right onto the code. The NER labels used are of IOB format. So beginning of South Africa location will have a tag BLOC and Africa will have tag ILOC. If the word doesn't fall in any of the mentioned categories, then its tag will be O. So we've used Kegel open dataset for finding out the labeled NER tagged sentences. We are using sklearn CRF suite as the model. So first things first, we pre-process and divide the data into train set and test it with a split ratio of 80 to 2. After that, we engineer the feature for each word. The input arguments for word to feature function are sentences and word index in the sentence. For each word, we are trying to look at the POS tag like if it's a noun phrase, verb phrase, etc. Then we look for other attributes like its neighboring word or its POS tag. Given this comprehensive feature vector, the CRF tries to learn the weight associated with each of this feature bin. This is because of the unitary term in linear chain CRF. Think of any R tag as label corresponding to hidden variables and this feature vector as an input random variable. For this linear CRF, Learning pairwise term is like learning co-occurrences of the labels. This common weight associated with each of these co-occurring labels can be thought of as contributing to the pairwise terms. Now, all these weights give us a good estimate about its contribution in NER. In the weight metrics corresponding to the pairwise features, B article I article pair has a higher value and so does B location I location pair and so on. Because this indicates that they are tightly linked as expected. The B org and B loc have negative weight. Can you sense why? B org and B loc are never going to be together because they are different tags and they need to be connected by some predicate like is location in, is situated at and so on. They can't be adjacent to each other for any reasons. If you observe the largest contributing feature for the person tag, then it comes out with the word Mr. This seems to be again quite intuitive because anything which is followed by Mr. is supposed to be a person tag, right? And the other elements in the list are something like the word president and so on. The link to this Jupyter notebook is mentioned in the video description. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe the channel and also mention us which papers you want us to review next time. So stay tuned. So if you like the videos then do subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update from Crazy Muse.